Hello and welcome to Unhacked. I'm Brian Graff, Senior Vice President of Business Development here at Abacode. We are here every week to provide you with the biggest hacking stories in cybersecurity and give you tips to help prevent those attacks from happening to you. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. So this week we're talking about the Colonial Pipeline attack again and the new regulations that are coming out because of it. So as we discussed last week, uh, hackers stole data and locked down OT networks and the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, that pipeline provides 45% of gas to the U.S. and was down for several days. Um, although the pipeline is a critical part of government infrastructure and the government has several regulations about the protection requirements of IT networks, there are actually very few laws requiring security of OT systems. Uh, again, federal laws require federal agencies, vendors implement security programs, but those are mostly limited to data protection. What do current laws require? Uh, current laws are designed to protect government systems and data, uh, things like confidential data, um, CUI, which is controlled unclassified information, and FCI, which is federal contracting information. And all those terms are just different types of data that the federal government generates and then sends to vendors for to provide services. Um, they require the laws require that vendors implement a security compliance program uh, based on accepted standards from NIST, the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. Uh, if you are a government vendor, you have to identify all government data in your in your systems. You have to perform an initial risk assessment. You have to apply security mechanisms based on those NIST controls. You have to perform continuous monitoring. You have to pre perform uh, vulnerability scanning and ongoing assessments to make sure you detect any flaws in your system prior to them causing a breach. And if there is a breach or an attack, you have to report them uh, both to uh, local uh, law enforcement and designated government agencies. So what's changing? The Department of Homeland Security started issuing directives as of May 27th to uh, require organizations that provide infrastructure to the federal government to be more stringent in their security programs. So prior to this, uh, the previous guidelines were first issued in 2010 uh, for pipeline security, and they were just guidelines, they were non-binding. They weren't updated until 2018 and still were just guidelines. They, no organization was required to report on them or assess against them. Do, from these new directives, uh, the companies are now required to appoint a security official uh, with a direct line to TSA or the federal agency in charge. They have to report cybersecurity attacks. They were not even required to do that prior to this, and they must perform security assessments. So uh, the, the federal government is taking uh, the very first incremental steps in applying cybersecurity to these organizations. But there still is a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of things that need to change. Um, assessments are now mandatory due to this directive, but the remediation is not, meaning um, you can assess an organization, you can assess your pipeline security and it could be uh, wide open in terms of vulnerabilities and you are not actually required to remediate. Uh, documentation of a formal security plan and policies is also not required. Um, and although companies are required to report incidents, they are not required to report on their security posture on a scheduled basis. Uh, there's a there's a big change in terms of uh, for CMMC, uh, which is uh, which is a standard that uh, vendors that are providing IT services to agencies must follow. That requires you implement an entire security program based on NIST that has a risk assessment, control implementation, and continuous monitoring of those controls and an independent assessment of those controls annually. Nothing like this exists for OT networks. And that is going to be the final step is that when the, or when the federal government begins to develop a full program for these OT networks, uh, there's gonna be an independent uh, organization body that's gonna have to go out and, and assess those organizations. So, Let's say you have an OT network and you are providing any sort of service to the federal government. What should you do? Well, first thing you should do is read the directives issued by the TSA and also CMMC and NIST 800-171, uh, which will provide you the security controls that the federal government has put together for their IT vendors, assuming that 
most of those controls will eventually be um, applied to you as well. Inventory your OT systems in your boundary. Uh, perform vulnerability scans to ensure you know every ingress and egress point to your OT network, all the critical systems inside of it, and begin to build your security plan based on the devices that you have running your systems. Determine the impact of a physical and network attack on infrastructure. How long can you stay down? How long, how much will that cost? You want to make sure that your spending, your security spend is commiserate with the impact of the attack. Um, you don't want to spend a million dollars to prevent an attack that's going to cost five hundred thousand uh, dollars. You need to make sure that you are getting that the bang for your buck in terms of security spend. Determine the process for recovering and the time it will take to resume. So this is one of the, your biggest tasks. You have to have a plan in place to resume operations when if you get hit by a ransomware attack. Do you have the ability to restore your services without getting a key from the ransomware gang? Are you able to uh, reinstall these systems? Some of them are very old in terms of OT networks. Uh, a lot of these systems are, are 10, 15 years old. So have you tried to... Uh, reinstall these systems recently. Are you able to spin back up these these old servers and these old systems? It could be a lot harder than you think. Um, so make sure that you can do that within the time period that it takes uh, for this, this uh, attack to become a catastrophic impact to your organization. The final thing you should do is research monitoring functionality uh, using a SIM for your OT network. There was an attack on a water system in Oldsmar, Florida earlier this year where a hacker attempted to uh, dump a dangerous amount of a chemical into the water supply. And the only reason it was stopped is that there happened to be a technician watching the, um, watching the system at that time and was able to override and stop it. Had he not been there, uh, the water supply would have been poisoned. Um, so that, is, that shows you the, uh, the effectiveness of 24-hour monitoring and the necessity of it for critical systems where uh, one one mistake could cause a catastrophic failure. Uh, you need to make sure you're doing 24-hour uh, monitoring. So that's it for Unhacked today. Uh, again, I'm Brian Graff here with Abacode, and we will see you next Thursday.